Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and just want to do a quick Magic Origins pre-release primer, talk about this coming weekend and the pre-release. So a lot of local game stores would do their pre-releases Friday at midnight, and then they'll continue on and do some Saturday and sometimes some Sunday pre-releases. So it depends on the game store, it depends on how many sessions they have based on how many customers they've had in the past show up to their pre-releases. Uh, so there's some that do quite a few, there's some that will only do one or two. Uh, some places it's a good idea to pre-register because there have been local game stores that do fill up. Um, other places do have plenty of room and are able to take people quite easily. So if you're not sure how many sessions your local game store has, you know, definitely check on their website online or talk with them or call the store. See if you need to register. I'd always recommend pre-registering if you think you're going to be able to make it to a certain event. Uh, so in different stores to do different types of events sometimes. Uh, most of the pre-releases I have been to, they'll just play four rounds of Swiss, so whether you win or lose, you play each round, and then you get a prize payout based on how many wins slash draws you have. Typically, you don't get any packs if you lose two, but if you win three or more, you'll get a prize payout of some kind, or if you uh, go three with a draw, you'll also get a prize payout. So, that's one way to do it. I've also been to stores that do just a five round tournament and then basically give prizes away much like a regular tournament. Like the top three will actually just get prizes and they'll split a booster box going the top probably two thirds of the box or so goes to the, to the winner. And then the second place will get um, more than half of what's left. And then third place will get a few packs. So you'll see different things. There's also two headed giants, competitions that will occur as well some stores will hold those for their pre-release so there's a lot of different things again check with your local game store see what they'll be doing but having said that let's talk about first what should you bring if you've never gone to a pre-release before there's not a whole lot you need to bring with you i mean people do like to bring things like trade binders to trade and some of their other decks maybe to play side games and things like that but this is not necessary some of the things i like to have handy though the first and most important thing people always forget it is a pen and paper especially a pen uh, when you get to your local game store if you aren't already a dci member you're going to need to fill out a form to get a dci card uh, so he'll need a pen to do that but even so if you're already a dci member usually you do have to fill out some sort of slip for entry and on top of that it's a very good idea to use a pen and pad to keep track of life totals now in a pre-release, you get your pre-release package. It comes with a spin-down dice to help you keep track of your life total, and that's totally fine. You can certainly use that, but the reason I suggest the pen and paper is if you're planning on playing Magic as more regularly and start to get into more competitive Magic, that's definitely the right way to do it. It helps keep track of life totals more accurately, and this way, if there's a dispute, it's easier for a judge to come back and look at the pattern of life loss and gain. So, not super important obviously in a pre-release which is a very casual format and is really just supposed to be fun uh, but it's good to get yourself into those habits but definitely you'll be happy if you have a pen i've seen stores that actually they just can't give pens out to everybody so sometimes they'll sell pens <laughs> sometimes they just plain don't have them you know so make sure you uh you bring that the next thing i have up here are card sleeves i, I think that's pretty important you know for most players the photo there is ultra pro they're kind of cheap uh, but they're notoriously bad quality but they're going to last you pre-release weekend so if you buy a pack and you get 50 a few of them could even break and you still got some extras there so they'll last you now if you want to invest in some nicer card sleeves maybe cost a little more they'll last you longer i mean that's a totally a good idea you'll be able to get more life out of them maybe use them for future pre-releases or tournaments or playing at home so what's nice about using these sleeves though in a pre-release a couple things one you could open a valuable card that even if you're not planning on collecting or building a deck with a lot of times your local store will buy it back from you for either cash or store credit so you don't want to damage it maybe you can make your money back from the sealed's uh, entry fee and maybe play another one so uh, it's worth it kind of keeping your cards in good shape and secondly some card stores have 
not clean tables. <laughs> Have you ever tried to shuffle your cards after a few matches and they've been on dirty tables? They actually do sometimes get kind of like grimy and start sticking together. It makes it hard to shuffle. So these will prevent those problems. Uh, play mats are an option too, of course, uh, but that's a little more of an investment. I don't really think it's necessary for a pre-release. Uh, but again, if you're going to play a lot of tournaments or play at your game store frequently, then it's definitely a good investment. Uh, a deck box is good too, not necessarily to worry about the quality of your cards but just to carry them around uh, sometimes you just see people just carrying stacks of cards around and if you're going to play in multiple events then it becomes even more important to have some kind of deck box or deck boxes or maybe a large uh, box that you can hold your cards in and even a bag to carry the stuff in at some point because uh, it just gets too confusing especially if you have multiple card pools you don't want to get them mixed up and finally some dice for counter purposes it's inevitable you're going to run into a situation when you play magic where you need counters <laughs> just going to happen uh so in this set's no different there's the renown mechanic and you know a lot of things you're going to need counters to keep track of so you know have a few dice you don't necessarily need like 50 dice i think even if you have you know four dice in a, in a game for sealed that's probably going to be enough uh so yeah so be prepared bring that stuff you know i also like to suggest you know definitely bring some you know water something to keep yourself hydrated uh four rounds of magic isn't super long but when you think about it if four rounds go an hour each and then you have you know 30 minutes to build your deck and then there's time in between I and mean, you're going to be there maybe six hours so uh depending on how efficient the store is and how quick the format is but you know it's still quite a long period of time so also snacks are good a lot of stores will sell snacks and water and drinks and stuff and that's great uh, but you probably want to be prepared and bring some stuff as well so let's talk about the mechanics of this particular set. So there's a few quote unquote new mechanics and the first one is Renown and this one is new. So you want to be very familiar with this. Basically what it says is when a creature has Renown, if it gets across and does damage to an opponent, then it gets a plus one plus one counter based on what the Renown number is. So in this example, it's Renown one. So if you get in there and do damage with this card, it's going to become a... 1-1 one, one with a plus 1 plus 1 counter, so in other words, a 2-2. Two, two. Next mechanic is Menace, and this isn't necessarily a new mechanic, it's just been keyworded now, but this basically means this creature can't be blocked except by two or more creatures. So it's a form of evasion, can be very powerful in aggro builds. In this example, you see a goblin with it, and uh, just be aware that that's out there, that's what that mechanic means. And Scry. Scry is a returning mechanic, but it's actually becoming evergreen now. So you're going to start seeing it in basically all the magic sets. Uh, but this is the first time that it's officially evergreen, and you're going to see it quite a bit. It's going to show up in multiple colors, but here's a copy of a card that is a blue creature with Scry 1. And whenever you scry, you just look at the top card of your library, and you may put that card on the bottom or keep it on the top. Now, if it's scry two, you get to look at the top two cards of your library. You can put them on top or bottom of your library in any order that you choose. If it's scry three, same thing with three cards, and so on and so forth. So that is scry. And then finally, we have spell mastery, which is a new mechanic. And basically, you just get a bonus if you have at least two or more instant and or sorcery cards in your graveyard. So by playing more instants or sorceries, or maybe milling yourself to get some cards in your graveyard, you get bonus effects. For example, this card destroys a creature. But if you have spell mastery, you also gain two life as well. So having said that, and we've looked at the new mechanics in the set, and now let's talk a little bit about bread and you may have heard this acronym before but this is an acronym that talks about really what you want to look at when you build your deck in limited for sealed or for draft and let's start with the b and that's bombs so basically bombs are win conditions you want to have a way to win the game so usually in limited these are big creatures big sweeping effects they're probably expensive here's a few examples that you could see in your card pool and when you play sealed uh, in many cases, they're rares or mythic rare cards, uh, but these are cards that when they get out on the board, you have a good chance of winning the game unless your opponent can do something about them. And you know, a lot of times they're real big creatures. Creatures with evasion are good candidates for uh, for bombs, and you know, even just economically costed creatures can work very well for you. 
removal. So to get your bombs across, you need some removal. And removal will look different in different colors, obviously, but here's a, just a few examples of cards that are going to remove a creature, get them out of your way, In even though sometimes you'll see like blue for example isn't going to outright destroy something but it can bounce it it can uh, take away its abilities such as flying so you can get a creature by um, black can be a little more self-destructive in this case you're you both have to sacrifice creatures and red can do direct damage in this case can also be self-destructive next is evasion so totally again we've mentioned this in the last two parts but it makes sense you want some creatures that have ways to get by flying is a great example of evasion and the second example there this card can tap creatures down trample is an example of evasion just because it can get some damage across even if the creature does get blocked so just finding ways to get the damage across so you're not at a stalemate and you're just not standing around with a gummed up uh, ground Next is aggro, and aggro is a strategy that when we talk about constructed decks, you can have aggro decks, but when you're looking at sealed, just having some aggressive creatures is going to help you. You want to fill in the slots of your mana curve that are maybe missing, and that's usually maybe the one, two, three slots, and that's where you're going to find these aggressive, kind of cheap, fast creatures typically. And here's a few examples. Uh, Bellows Lizard on its own doesn't look like an amazing card, but if you don't have any one drops in your deck and you want something aggressive that can get in for some early damage, it's going to be an okay card. Um, Fetid Imp is actually much better because it can get death touch, but it's also just a cheap little flyer that can get some damage across early on. Um, Abbot of the Carol Keep is actually a phenomenal aggressive card. Can, it's probably standard playable, uh, but a card like this, you don't want to pass by just because it's only a 2-1. It can get in there, be very aggressive, and get early damage in. And finally, D stands for duds, but what duds really means is they're kind of like your sideboard cards. I mean, be aware of what's in your sideboard is the story here. So these are three cards that are actually really fine cards, but they may just start off in your sideboard. Smash to Smithereens is awesome if your opponent's playing some artifacts. Aerial Volley is awesome if your opponent has some small flying creatures. Uh, Vrine Windmare is awesome if your opponent's playing a lot more non-creature spells than you are. Uh, so these are cards that you just don't want to forget about. You might not main deck these. They, you might not be super happy to open them and throw them in your deck originally, but at some point you may want to bring these in, so don't forget about them. Now the last thing I wanted to talk about as far as my advice for the pre-release, the biggest thing you can do to really build a successful deck is pay close attention to the synergy in your pool. Synergy is something that I think Wizards is a lot more comfortable now building around when it comes to these limited environments and I've noticed this in at least the last couple sets that they've put together that in the past they they didn't want to make things too obvious uh, but now they're a little more comfortable I think showing you that there is a connection between certain mechanics in the set so here's just a few quick examples blue and red have this artificer theme going on with these thopter tokens and it's really a cool theme. If you have a lot of cards in your pool that work towards that theme, even though the individual cards themselves might not be super powerful, they just become much better when played with their counterparts. Uh, Shaman of the Pack is incredible if you have a lot of elves. <laughs> Blood Cursed Knight is going to be amazing if you're playing that black-white Enchantment Matters deck. So the reason I picked some of these gold cards is the gold cards are kind of clues <laughs> to some of these synergies. So pay attention to your gold cards and kind of keep an eye on like set reviews and spoilers so that you can look for t these type of things ahead of time so you know when you go into a pre-release what type of synergies are out there. And if you have a lot of, say, black and green cards, well, let's take a look at what you have there. Maybe you have a lot of elves and maybe you have some synergy there that's going to be a strong deck. Now, you might have opened Jace in blue or some other bomb in another color, but sometimes synergies are just going to be better than one good bomb in another color. So you just want to be really cognizant of that. So having said that, that is my advice on the Magic Origins pre-release. I hope that helps a little bit for everyone out there, especially if this is your first pre-release. Uh, I've been to many of them, and really just have fun. It's really a fun environment. It's a place just to kind of relax, see the new cards, meet people, play Magic in person instead of, instead of playing online. 
you know, it's supposed to be a really casual and relaxed atmosphere. So hopefully you find a good game store that is inclusive and has some good folks going there to play, and you'll have a good time. So, hey, as always, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe, and have a great day. Hey, thanks as always for watching. If you're still looking for quality Magic the Gathering videos, click on one of these annotations. And if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, smash that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the breaking MTG news, spoilers, set reviews, crazy product openings, or gameplay videos on Heroes and Legends MTG. Talk to you again soon, and have a great day.